I stumbled on a large study conducted by scientists at the University of Toronto that found 42% of all adults with ADHD are in excellent mental health. Excellent mental health? Nearly half of us? I was floored. Why wasn't everyone talking about this study? I began to wonder, what would happen if instead of pathologizing ADHD, we looked at what these 42% of people were doing to live successfully with ADHD and leveraged their strategies for ourselves? Richard Branson, Michael Phelps, Justin Timberlake, James Carville. Wait a minute. Where are the women? Greta Gerwig, Lisa Ling, Audra McDonald, Simone Biles. That sounds like a list of highly successful titans in a variety of industries. They all have ADHD, but you don't hear much about that now, do you? You know what else you don't hear about? Are the 43% of people with ADHD who are in excellent mental health. Why aren't we talking about them and what they're doing right? I'm your host, Tracy Atsuka, and that's exactly what we do here. I'm a lawyer, not a doctor, a lifelong student, and now the author of my new book, ADHD for Smartass Women. I'm also a certified ADHD coach and the creator of Your ADHD Brain is A-OK, a patented system that helps ADHD women just like you get unstuck and fall in love with their brilliant brains. Here... We embrace our too muchness and we focus on our strengths. My guests and I credit our ADHD for some of our greatest gifts. And to those who still think they're too much, too impulsive, too scattered, too disorganized, I say no one ever made a difference by being too little. Hello, I am your host, Tracy Otsuka. Thank you so much for joining me here for episode number 258 of ADHD for Smartass Women. You know, this is such an important episode for me personally, and it's been a really long time coming, more than two years, actually. It's seen me through the hardest thing I've ever done professionally, which is write a book, led me through my son's journey and three majors at NYU. He's almost done. He's a senior. And the passing, of course, of my beautiful mother. These past two years have been really hard, but they've also been really good. They say that when you write a book, you become a different person. So who you are when you start is not the same person as when you finish. And I think that's really true. They also say that you become a much better writer And you become more confident in your writing when you write a book. And I would say for me, uh, I don't know, that's probably not so true. And I suspect that those of you with ADHD might be able to relate to what I'm going to say about that next. You know, we have so many ideas and we try to pack them in because we're not always sure what's most important. And we're not always sure what's most important because we've noticed that it's different for all of us. Because we're all so different, that's exactly what makes me feel like I need to include everything and the kitchen sink just to make sure that I've got you all covered. It's also why I will forever be indebted to my amazing editors, Sarah Toland and Maddie Pilari, who knew exactly what to keep and what to cut, and my brilliant acquiring editor at HarperCollins, William Morrow, Lisa Sharkey. I could never have done this without them. And I am 100% certain of that. So today, what I'm going to do is I am going to share the introduction of my audiobook for ADHD for Smartass Women. You know, everyone told me, don't release the introduction early. Release chapter one. And I was like, no, I need to start with the introduction. So why was that? Because the introduction was where I infused as much hope as I could possibly infuse. In fact, I made my audiobook team sit through two recordings of the introduction, 
One at the beginning where it should have been. But then over the next three days, as I was recording, I kept thinking, because I was new at recording an audiobook, that I hadn't nailed the hope. And so I wanted to do it again. And so they kindly obliged, even though it meant that they had to hang around longer on a Friday night. So I'm really proud of this book, but it's also kind of scary, right? Once you write a book, there's not a whole lot of places you can hide. And I feel like, I don't know, I'm kind of pitted against many, many clinicians and people and an industry who sees ADHD only as a weakness. And who am I to come in and say, no, you're wrong. But there's science and medicine and studies. And you know what? I believe in it all. But there's also you, the thousands of ADHD women that I've had the privilege of meeting. And I just know after meeting all of you that they're getting it wrong. They're getting it really wrong. I've read all your emails. I've responded to your DMs. I've met so many of you in my programs. Everywhere I go, there's another kick-ass entrepreneur who tells me that, oh, by the way, I have ADHD too. So I don't have a choice, right? I have to do this, not only for you and other women, but for the young girls who will follow us. Because if they can grow up in a world that values their brilliant, albeit unique brains, their life, their life's going to be completely different. You, you shaped who I've become. And so we fight for ADHD women everywhere. Look, this is about more than just turning pages in a book. It's about changing chapters in women and then girls' lives. I hope that my book, it doesn't just flip the script on ADHD. I hope that it totally rewrites the ending. So now I bring you the audible introduction for ADHD for Smartass Women. People assume that when you have ADHD, you're lazy and motivated and not living to your full potential. Only one of those things is true. ADHD for Smartass Women, the book, helps readers understand the different strategies that our unique brains require to succeed so that we can become the best version of ourselves right now. And you know what? It's available for pre-order right now at ADHDforsmartwomen.com forward slash book. If you've ever received any value from this podcast or if you've ever felt supported by me through this podcast, then it would mean the world to me to have your support in return by pre-ordering a copy of my book. You might be thinking, well, I'll just wait until the book comes out on December 26th. Thank you. But we need you to pre-order the book right now. Why? First of all, if you pre-order the book right now, you'll get some great pre-order bonuses. You can find them at ADHDforsmartwomen.com forward slash book. Second, the more buzz this book gets, the more reach we get. The more booksellers find out about it, the more press we get, the more women will hear about it. And of course, the natural offshoot of all of this is we help more women fall in love with their ADHD brain. So please pre-order right now at ADHDforsmartwomen.com forward slash book before you forget. Right now, do it. Introduction, How I Became the Fairy Godmother of ADHD Women. Your number one job as his parent is to reduce his expectations so he won't be disappointed in life. The child psychologist looked me straight in the eyes as she leaned forward and hooked her pewter hair behind one ear. I stared back blankly. Miss Otsuka, do you have any questions, she asked. Yes, I had a million questions about what she had just told me about my son, Marcus. Reduce his expectations for life at age 12? Simply because he had ADHD? Her words burned through the air, but I didn't ask any questions. She had her mind made up, and I wasn't going to change it. Instead, I just shut down. Marcus had been diagnosed with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, by a clinical neuropsychologist after enduring a battery of psychological 
visual, and educational tests and undergoing various therapies for much of the last three years. My husband and I were confused by the diagnosis, so we had been working with the psychologist to learn more. She had come highly referred as the ADHD expert. But after she harshly scolded Marcus and my daughter for playfully pushing each other in one of our sessions, I started to question her approach. Now she was suggesting we lower his expectations in life? Who in their right mind would ever suggest limiting a child's potential for any reason whatsoever? She clearly didn't know Marcus. Charismatic, confident, and incessantly curious, he wouldn't stop until he had answers to all the questions that interested him. He feared nothing except bugs and walked around like an explorer staking his claim in the new world. He was driven and spent hours a week researching potential careers and the universities that would prepare him for those careers, starting at the age of nine. He had big dreams and high aspirations. Why would I ever quash his ambitions? But this wasn't what I asked the psychologist. Instead, I gathered my bag, walked out of her office, and never looked back. Eight months later, my world changed again when I received the same diagnosis. Like Marcus, I also had ADHD. I received this diagnosis only after learning everything I could about the condition once Marcus was diagnosed, eventually seeing in myself many of the same symptoms, then proactively seeking out an adult ADHD specialist to confirm my suspicions. This is how I realized that ADHD is often passed down from parent to child and that the condition doesn't primarily affect boys and men, as plenty of doctors still believe. Just as many girls and women have ADHD, and they often go undiagnosed for years or are misdiagnosed with mental health conditions like depression, anxiety, or bipolar disorder. ADHD also manifests differently in everyone, and you don't have to exhibit the stereotypical symptoms that many people, including doctors, associate with ADHD, like fidgeting, misbehaving, or doing poorly in school. I was gobsmacked. How could I have made it through four decades of life and never considered that I might have ADHD? Pretty soon, I learned, I wasn't alone. As many as 75% of girls and women with ADHD go undiagnosed. Once I realized how many misconceptions there were about ADHD and how many women were undiagnosed or misdiagnosed or were diagnosed then told to lower their ambitions as a result, I decided to make it my mission to change the conversation around the condition. Because I was certain that I've been successful in life because of my ADHD, not despite it. The truth is, I felt different my entire life because I was always too much. I was too chatty, for example. My parents called me the Burlingame Blab after my hometown, Burlingame, California because I'd tell family secrets to anyone who'd listen. I was also too intent on challenging the status quo. On a lark, I met my husband through a personal ad well before there was online dating. Despite telling him I wasn't interested in anything serious, I was the one who proposed because when I know what I want, I'm driven to make it happen. And what I wanted was to get married in a very specific place, and I didn't want to wait another year to reserve it. More of this story will be told later. I'm too ambitious and too willing to say exactly what's on my mind, like when I recently told a Zoom room full of college professors that their teaching methods were terrible for neurodivergent students. Yikes. Neurodivergent describes a person's brain, like mine, that processes or learns differently from what's considered standard. Thinking through my diagnosis more carefully, I made an important connection. Some of what others perceive as my ADHD weaknesses are exactly my greatest strengths. And my son is no different. You see, we're not hyperactive, just otherworldly energetic. We're not distractible, just incessantly curious. And yes, we can be impulsive, but some experts believe that creativity is simply impulsivity gone right. 
And one reason why many believe that Leonardo da Vinci, Vincent van Gogh, and Pablo Picasso all had ADHD. My ADHD diagnosis confirmed that I had been right about Marcus and his big ambitions. Given the right environment, he could accomplish his wildest dreams because I had. With two graduate degrees, I passed the bar, worked as an attorney, and started three different companies. I have a 30-year successful marriage and have remained happy and healthy throughout life. Today, I can see that my personal drive is a great form of hyperactivity and that my interpersonal intuition is the reason I can walk into a room and read how people feel before anyone utters a word, which has helped me successfully predict the mood of a group and ensure that everyone feels heard. It's not that I don't have weaknesses. I'm never on time for anything that's not business-related. And I'm incapable of washing a load of laundry just once because I forget about the wet clothes in the dryer for days. The smoke alarm is the only reason my house hasn't burned to the ground. And I cannot balance a checkbook to save my life. But despite my issues with time, memory, and money, I shouldn't be pathologized for having a brain that works differently. And neither should you. The more I learned about ADHD, the more frustrated I became with how many misconceptions and roadblocks there are for those of us who are neurodivergent. At the same time, I was meeting so many accomplished, successful, and brilliant women with ADHD. How come no one was talking about and celebrating us? This is how I decided to start the podcast ADHD for Smartass Women so that I could help us all better understand our brilliant, creative brains. I had an additional motive to meet more women with ADHD. And what better way to find my people than by letting them know that I am their people? What I didn't realize at the time, however, was just how many of my people were out there. In a little over a year, my podcast was ranked in the top half of 1%, of all podcasts in the world on any subject. Clearly, there were many other women, and some men, who resonated with my strengths-focused view of ADHD. Even more surprisingly, I started to receive messages from psychiatrists, psychologists, neurologists, therapists, and other medical professionals from around the world who commended me on the quality of my work and told me that they were learning about ADHD from me. Some also said they had referred their ADHD patients or clients to my podcast. Then, one of the country's leading ADHD experts, psychiatrist, and former Harvard Medical School professor, Dr. Edward M. Hallowell, whom I interviewed on my podcast, called me a marvelous fairy godmother liberating women from their negative labels and helping them lay claim to the wonderful life they can have. This is how many women started calling me their fairy godmother, a title that has stuck. With time, I began to realize the immense value of belonging to a community of like-minded ADHD women. My podcast, along with the online programs I subsequently launched for women with ADHD, was helping them recognize their own brilliance by seeing the same traits in other incredible women. Today, our community of ADHD women includes professors, scientists, doctors, lawyers, CEOs, entrepreneurs, contractors, artists, restaurateurs, writers, and everyone else who wants to tap into the strengths that ADHD has to offer and rewrite their own script. Meeting these women is inspiring and motivating. Throughout this book, I'll introduce them to you because it's important you meet them too. What these women have in common is the shared belief that they are successful because of their ADHD, not despite it. They know that, given the right environment, they can take advantage of their natural strengths and interests. Many of these women are also action-oriented. They don't think about what they can't do or wish they could do. Instead, they go out and do it. 
And because they do it, you can do it too. In my quest to learn all I could about ADHD, I eventually became an ADHD coach, which is a trained professional who helps people with the condition better manage their lives and symptoms. While there is no one regulating body that certifies coaches, most educational institutions that offer ADHD coach training have robust and specific criteria people must follow before becoming a coach. Some of the world's leading coaching organizations, like the nonprofit International Coaching Federation, certify ADHD training programs to help add credibility. Research shows that people who work with ADHD coaches end up improving their motivation, concentration, time management skills, self-esteem, and satisfaction with their school or work, in addition to other aspects of their daily function and life. This is one reason that many psychiatrists, psychologists, pediatricians, and other medical experts recommend working with an ADHD coach. In the epilogue, I'll give you guidelines on how to find a good ADHD coach. I started taking ADHD coaching classes to better understand how my brain worked. While I never set out to become a coach myself, once I started taking the classes, I couldn't stop. I was so interested in putting together my own personal ADHD puzzle and understanding what makes my brain tick that I wanted to keep learning as much about the condition as I could. I also finally understood why life coaching has never worked for me. It wasn't that I was uncoachable, as I had believed after my less than satisfying experience with a top life coach, but that I wasn't being coached in the right ways for my differently wired brain. At the same time, I began to see just how effective ADHD coaching can be and what a difference the right coach can make when added to our overall toolkit, which can also include medication, exercise, mindfulness, and other treatments and therapies. I also saw how often ADHD doctors insist their patients partner with ADHD coaches because these medical professionals understand the value of ADHD coaching. After I became a coach and started working exclusively with female clients, I saw how quickly they improved after realizing the reason they'd been struggling their whole lives wasn't because they were flawed or not smart enough. They simply had ADHD. It was no longer an excuse, just a reason. Once this clicked, they were able to develop new workarounds and strategies that better leveraged their symptoms rather than allowing themselves to remain hamstrung by their traits. Through my podcast and the other ADHD groups I created, my clients were also able to connect with other successful, happy women with similar symptoms, which did the most work to dissipate the shame many felt. By seeing themselves in other successful women, many of my clients have finally been able to acknowledge and accept that they're not broken and they don't have some character flaw or moral failing. Instead, we women with ADHD have a unique brain that runs on a different operating system, like being a Mac in a Windows-driven world. Inspired, I started offering free workshops like my five days to fall in love with your ADHD brain. That's when it became even clearer to me that teaching ADHD women how their brains work can greatly reduce shame, help overhaul self-image, and change their belief in what they think they're capable of, sometimes in just a matter of days. And this is possible for you too. Even if you've lived with ADHD for years, or have already tried multiple sessions of traditional therapy or life coaching. For all these reasons, I knew that I had to write an ADHD book for women that didn't just disperse the same old or traditional advice, like to keep a to-do list and write everything in your planner, which may or may not work for you. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, medical professionals who don't understand ADHD have chided women who've diagnosed themselves with the condition by using TikTok, a real phenomenon chronicled by Good Morning America, Time Magazine, and many other eminent media outlets. The reason women have turned to TikTok to get help with ADHD is because we haven't felt heard or seen, and we've been undiagnosed 
misdiagnosed, or worse still, told that it's all in our head. Other times when doctors believe we have ADHD, we're given a prescription or a bunch of literature highlighting how we're disordered or defective, when in reality, our brilliant brains just work differently. Recently, while reading the latest research on ADHD, as I often do, I stumbled on a large study conducted by scientists at the University of Toronto that found 42% of all adults with ADHD are in excellent mental health. Excellent mental health? Nearly half of us? I was floored. Why wasn't everyone talking about this study? I began to wonder, What would happen if instead of pathologizing ADHD, we looked at what these 42% of people were doing to live successfully with ADHD and leveraged their strategies for ourselves? Discovering what your best life can look like with ADHD isn't always a straight path forward, and it may mean upsetting the apple cart in places as you step into the brilliance of your extraordinary brain. Those of us with ADHD think differently, and not everyone likes different. I don't have tips on how to fit in because I don't believe we need to fit in. Instead, I believe we should embrace our unique brains so that we can work with our biology, not against it, to be truly successful and happy. This is what I want to teach you, how to work with your exceptional brain so you can do things your own way and live the life you were meant to live. If you are struggling with your ADHD, one reason may be because you're still trying harder to do things society's way. A lot of ADHD women think they're broken because they live outside the status quo. But instead of kicking it to the curb where it belongs, they end up trying to improve the areas of their brains that society tells us need shoring up. I strongly believe, however, that there are far better ways to spend your time, like embracing what makes you special and living up to your potential. You don't have to fit a square peg into a round hole. In fact, you can go ahead and ask why the damn hole needs filling in the first place. This book is not packed with incomprehensible, confusing, or pathologizing medical jargon. It's written the way most of us speak simply and directly, with a sense of humor. You can also start the book wherever you want. See what interests you. You have my permission not to finish a chapter if it doesn't resonate with you. I want this book to feel fun and easy so that you feel good about listening to it and keep listening to it. What I want to foster in you with this book is positive emotion. When we feel satisfaction, success, happiness, or joy, because that's exactly what our ADHD brains need to feel inspired to keep going. One of the most important lessons I can impart to you is start to get curious about what works for you. Whether you realize it or not, you already have systems and procedures in place that function best with your ADHD brain. Together, We'll get curious about your systems and how you can leverage and implement them. That's the big secret with ADHD. You are already the expert on you. No one knows what will work best for you other than you. And while many of us may have stopped believing in ourselves years ago after being told we were too much, I'm here to teach you how to start trusting in yourself again. I have never met a person with ADHD who wasn't truly brilliant at something. Not one. That includes you, me, and my son, Marcus, who has been my greatest teacher. He's now in his junior year at New York University and was recently offered a summer internship at an international bank after beating out 870 applications for one of 15 spots. Not bad for a kid who was told to lower his ambitions. Mark has taught me that often our creative ADHD brains need more structure, not less. By finding the right environment and surrounding himself with people who believe in him, 
My son's sky has become limitless, and so can yours. Marcus didn't need to have his expectations lowered. He needed them raised. Once he knew how his different brain worked and understood how smart and capable he was, hope took hold. Hope is the bridge to our success. It fuels our intentions, drives our determination, and gives us the confidence to soar. Hope is my promise to you. So, there we have the introduction of ADHD for smart-ass women. It's a good, hope-filled start to falling in love with your ADHD brain, don't you think? So, right around now, when I have a guest, I will ask the guest something like this. So, Tracy, are you working on something that you want to tell us about? Or usually I'll say, guest name, are you working on something that you want to tell us about? Well, actually, I am. I have a book that's available for pre-order called, you got it, ADHD for Smartass Women. And you can order it right now at ADHDforsmartwomen.com forward slash book. Look, once we all understand ADHD, we can work together in a more powerful way to accomplish almost anything. Because I have a neurodivergent brain, I know that I need people with neurotypical brains to help me with structure and direction and planning and follow through. At the same time, people with neurotypical brains need my neurodivergent brain for its creativity, hyperfocus, and ability to do big things. And you know what? Together, we can be unstoppable. So that's what I have for you for this week. If you like this episode with me, Please let me know by pre-ordering my book at ADHDforsmartwomen.com forward slash book. My goal, you know my goal, it's to change the conversation around ADHD, helping as many women as I possibly can learn how their ADHD brains work so that they too may discover their amazing strengths. As always, you're listening to ADHD for Smartass Women. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you here next week. You've been listening to the ADHD for Smartass Women podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Atsuka. Join us at ADHDforsmartwomen.com, where you can find more information on my new book, ADHD for Smartass Women, and my patented Your ADHD Brain is A-OK system to help you get unstuck and fall in love with your brilliant brain.